Rutland's here. Yes, Andy. No. No, I'm afraid I won't be able to make the trade fair reception. <coughs> well, to tell you the truth, old man, I didn't get home till rather late and I'm going to turn in early. Yes, sure. See you tomorrow. Fine. Yeah. Comrade. How do you do? Tvarish. Comrade Polkiev greets you and hopes you had a fruitful visit to Iraq. Thank you. Things didn't go too badly. I have some pieces of information that I think will fascinate Comrade Polkiev. Oh. Он говорит, что у него интересные новости. Хорошо. Хорошо. Our contact in Baghdad has some most interest. Нет, нет, есть нет. We must await the arrival of Comrade Sonomi. And who is Comrade Solomon, if I may ask? Oh, Comrade Solomon has taken over from Comrade Poltiev. Oh. Then I expect I must congratulate Comrade Poltiev on his promotion. Promotion? I suppose you could call it that. Comrade Ratlich, allow me to present Comrade Solomon. How do you do? Scarigi mi tor pizza. Omenia niet vreni. You will please make a report immediately. The comrade is pressed for time. Just as the comrade pleases. First, the news from our agent in Baghdad. He's going to give us the news. On niveau negozio bagenti Baghdad. Kato. A tot again. The comrade would like to know the name of this agent. Please tell the comrade, most respectfully, that I am not permitted to reveal our sources of information, but I'm sure he'll be very interested to know that our man there uh, has a direct contact with a member of British M9. Nicely timed, old man. You must contact London immediately. Our M9 man in Baghdad has got a double. Tell them a full report follows. Excellent. No one is interested in public call boxes. Well, if you say so. I had to talk to you before you left. Am I going somewhere? Baghdad. We think our associate over there has been cooking the books. We want you to find out if he's been playing a double game. Drake. 
I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't understand you. Our associate out there happens to be a friend of mine. But of course, that's why we picked you. Then you can find somebody else. We have confirmation. Absolute proof? As good as. Uh, very well, it's, it's better me than one of the general's men. I'll do it. Right away. We are extremely worried. No more than I am. print I picked up in the bazaar yesterday. I think it's rather good. Hey, eh? Who did you pick up? Oh, idiot. I shouldn't be surprised if it weren't a genuine copy of a genuine... Syed! Oh, where's he got to? And what kind of a beast has got cold blue eyes? <laughs> John! <laughs> oh, Bill, how Oh, are you? this is great! Well, how long you stay? Oh, now, that's a question I wouldn't like to Well, there's that bottle in the fridge. Oh, where are you things? Uh, at the Hotel Excelsior. Oh, John, oh. so I have to fetch them right away. Oh, no, but You're no, staying here. <laughs> uh, well, well, well. Hey, you're looking fine. <laughs> you don't look so bad yourself. Oh, come in, John. Yeah. Rest your weary limbs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How are things in London? Oh, uh, nothing new. Just wondered. They haven't contacted me for a week now. Huh? <laughs> You're not grumbling, eh? I thought there might be a bit of a shake-up. Why have they sent you out here? Oh, it's a little job. I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Uh, didn't, they, uh, didn't they signal you I was coming? No. Huh. It's funny. What's going on there? Where? London. Well, nothing, why? There's nobody sharpening a knife for me, is there? <laughs> why would there be? You sure? Why? You would tell me, wouldn't you? Hmm? Bill, what on earth gives you the idea that, that someone's got their knives out for you, eh? No reason. Fifth sense, maybe. Uh, you must have uh, some reason at the, uh, the back of your mind. What, what a beautiful sight. Me or the bottle? Both. Saeed, do you remember Mr. Drake? Of course he does. Eh, hello, Mr. Salam, Saeed. Now, John, we don't want you working all the time. We want to see plenty of you this time. Now, you promise. All right, I promise. That's fine. Well, you um, certainly do yourselves well these days. What do you mean? The uh, Arabian Nights. Oh, the apartment. Leslie rents it from an aging princess. We get it for a song. Pure Dresden, very brittle, but a darling old thing. And do you always have a bottle of champagne in the fridge in case somebody drops in? Oh, no, 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 no. That's just for my birthday. Oh, many happy returns. Uh, it's not until tomorrow. I came just in time. It's today now. Here's to me, old Wait. friend. Well, I'm not that old. <laughs> well, here's to my oldest friend. To our best friend. Mm. Uh, Leslie down yet? Not yet. How can we talk? How about taking a stroll in the cool night air? Is, uh, is this safe? Not from buggy? You think I don't know my job? What, uh, what do you know about Allah Edin? Quite a bit. He's the Eminence Grease behind the far left out here. We hear that he's been up to tricks with the Russians. Well, that would be natural enough. Our people play tag with the right. What kind of tricks? Treacherous tricks. Treachery? That's a loaded word, isn't it? Oh, uh, you think so? Well, some people might think that my activities out here were treacherous. Well, in what way? Well, it depends whose eyes you're looking through. A hero through one man's eyes can be a traitor through another. Yeah. Well, um, to get back to Edeen, he's considered to be a serious threat to our policies in this part of the world. Yes? Now, the idea is that we raid his place and we believe the documents we find there could be an embarrassment to him. They might uh, nip his political ambitions in the bud. And it might also backfire. 
Imperialistic interference, it might do Edine more good than harm. Well, it's not our job to question policy, is it? No, ours but to do or die. Now, when do you intend to carry out this ill-advised plan? Well, as soon as you can set it up. You, you don't expect any trouble to? No, it should be simple enough. Edine wouldn't expect us to do anything so stupid. Oh, come on now, John. Level with me. Why have they sent you out here? Why didn't they trust this one to me? <laughs> I was at a loose end. I, I'm supposed to be a dab hand at this sort of thing. Send for Drake. It's uh, stupid, isn't it? Dinner is served, gentlemen. Oh. oh, it's cold. John, would you bring my wrap, please? Oh, yes, sure. Tomorrow night. It's a date. I've decided to stage a raid on Edine's place. It's all set for tonight. Nobody apart from Bill Vincent knows about my plan. So that if all goes well, it would indicate that he is in the clear. If anything goes wrong, investigation proceeds. smell up here. They should bottle it. Looks nice and quiet over there. Well, I told you, he's not at home. He's at the rally. What am I waiting for? Pass me the radio. What do you want that for? Oh, uh, just a bit of gadgetry in case I walk into a trap. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs>
went on in there? It was a trap. Someone talked. London. Never could keep their mouths shut. I think it was someone near her home. Amateur. I check over the whole place every week. No, there, there are no bugs here. That's not the way it leaked. I told you, somebody in London talked. No. How can you be sure? Nobody in London knew about the raid. But who have you talked to since you've been here? No, Bill, there were only two people who knew about it. You and me. Well, then they were waiting for somebody else. Ed Dean They were waiting for me. They talked to me in English. Well, someone else must have known. I mean, somebody briefed you in London. They briefed me all right. But the briefing had nothing to do with Edine. There's a trap. You set a trap for me? You mean they think I've gone double? But well, we've worked together for ten years now. You can't believe it! But you do, eh? Why didn't you get somebody else to do that dirty work? Oh, it was a pushover, wasn't it? You were my friend, you had the hospitality of my house, and... Get out of here! John, what is it? Get out! John, what's happened? What's this all about? Ask Bill. I have. He won't tell me. It's to do with our firm. Well, then why all this personal animosity? It's a question of policy. Get Bill to explain. John, don't lie to me. I know what you two really do. Business trips for world travel. He always used to call me and make reasonable explanations. Later on, they didn't always check. Then there was an Australian girl. We were supposed to be in Tehran on business. Then a girlfriend of mine came back from Persia and said he was seen about everywhere with this beautiful dark-haired secretary, an Anglo-American. I left him. He chased after me to London. That was when he told me. The girl is now in prison. Serve her right. What for? Selling secrets? No. Running after Bill. Or oh, you wouldn't understand. You're not a jealous person. Anyway, of course, you're not married, are you? That's why. It uh, doesn't work in this game. I thought that you and Bill were the exception. Goodbye, Leslie. Please, it's this bad. Don't see Look, John, whatever it is, I'm not having you walk out of my house in the middle of the night. Oh, please, you must stay. Look, if you two can just talk this thing over in the morning, I know there's some misunderstanding, a mistake. Oh, please. I hope there is a mistake. You'll stay. As it's your birthday. <laughs> but I have to take a little stroll. 
I'll be back. Is positively warm. Phelps, catch that waiter, will you please? Yes, sir. Don't bother, Phelps. While I wait, the rest of my breakfast will get cold. Good morning, Drake. And how did you know I was here? Or is that a silly question? Phelps, you must be more careful. Sorry, sir. Don't let it happen again. That'll be all until you relieve Simpson. Call in every two hours. Yes, sir. When did you get in? I've only just arrived. I was in Beirut. London called me last night and I came right over. Dirty business, this. What is? This report on Bill Vincent. They phoned it through to the Lebanese embassy last night. So what exactly are you doing here? Taking over from you, old man. I should have thought you'd have been on your way by now. How are you going to handle it? Not really any of your business, old man, but since you ask, I'm going to order him out on the first flight back home. And if he refuses? Then I shall keep my bloodhounds on his trail until he gets so scared that he bolts for the other side. That'll give us an excuse to take care of him. No recriminations, much tidier altogether. Better watch his step. We may all be making a mistake about him. I understand you were a friend of his. Um, coffee? Yes. I am a friend of his, and I don't intend to see him involved in any of those unfortunate accidents that you arrange so neatly. Look, old man, this really is none of your business. The General's my only boss. Butcher Baverstock. He can keep his hired assassins out of this. I'll have you know that I resent that, Drake. You're sure you won't have any coffee? It's delicious. No, thank you. Then I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, trot along home and leave the field to me. I bet you would. But I don't intend to. I intend to stay on and referee this bout, and if you deliver one foul blow, I'll see that questions are asked in Parliament. Have a pleasant flight home. You went out early, sir? Yes, I did indeed, sir. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Vincent about? They have just gone out. Oh, just yourself in the place? Yes, sir. Uh, come with me, would you, sir? Uh, would you take this to the Hotel Excelsior for me? Hotel Excelsior? That's right. Out there. Sir, hold us in. Thank you.
low can you get? If, uh, you didn't pass on the news of the raid, then we must find out who did. I was, uh, trying to discover if your pillow talk with Leslie had been bugged. Did you tell her about the raid? Why did you tell her you worked for M9? Is it a tooth? No, it's uh, just a cut. I know it's not in the book, but I did. I don't suppose I'm the first agent to tell his wife. Uh, who else did you tell? That's a stupid question, is it? Who else did she tell? No one. How do you know? You, uh, come from a very large family, don't you? Mm, yes. Tendency to confide. Agent's predictable character flaw. My character may be full of flaws, but I don't rat on my friends. Bill, promise me that whatever you do, you won't run. Run? Why should I run? Don't. I'm warning you. Don't run. If you want me, I'll be at the Hotel Excelsior. Vincent, I was hoping you'd look in. Your green silk's ready for fitting. I have to try now. Mr. Vincent. Uh, Mrs. Vincent, I am afraid she's not here. Of course I'm sure. She did come in earlier. A pity I missed her. Never mind. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I was backing and, and, and the gas pedal stopped. This would be the thing to happen, wouldn't it? 
You should have it fixed. Uh, yeah, well, I really am most, most terribly sorry, I assure you. Uh, look, my, my insurance company will pay. Here's my uh, driving license. I expect you want my name and address, and if I might just see your driving license. I'm not interested in insurance, Mr. Lawrence. I don't live in this country. I'm merely passing through. I can get this thing straightened out when I get home. You just give me 500 dinar and we can forget about it. I say that's terribly decent of you, but I'd rather the insurance company paid. Now, if I might just see your license, please. I don't see what possible interest that could be to you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, not to be to, to the insurance company. I, I don't see what possible reason you can have for refusing to show it to me. Mr. Uh, Oh. Well, um, in that case, I shall have to appeal to the police. If you do that, Mr. Lawrence, I'm afraid I shall have to charge you with negligent driving. I don't see why you should be so aggressive. I mean, I only asked to see your license. Very well. Oh, thank you. You can forget about the claim, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, my brother owns a garage. He'll take care of it for nothing. Thank you so much. Not at all. Uh, Syed, uh, yes. Is Mr. Vincent in? Oh, dear, what a pity I missed him. Uh, I'll speak to Mrs. Vincent, then. Yes, Mr. Drake. Hello, Leslie. How are you? I'm fine. Poor Bill, you don't know what you've done to him. I've, uh, I've got good news for him. I've been ordered home right away. Is your job finished here, then? Yes, yes, they've called the whole thing off. Leslie, you still there? Yes, yes. I'm afraid. Uh, you must see Bill before you go. Oh, no time. Next time you're both in London, you must come and stay with me. Of course. Promise? Yes, yes, I promise. All right. Goodbye, Leslie. Uh, goodbye, John. Uh, don't leave it so long next time. Uh, why, hello, Mrs. Vincent. I will finish this and then we... A few moments, Natalie. John is sure that yes. What are you doing here? You uh, do speak to Ivan in Russian, don't you? Russian? Why else should I do that? He uh, is Russian, isn't he? Is he? I've never asked him. What are you doing here? Don't fence, Leslie. We're, we're old friends. Let's stay friends. Let's be honest with each other. Why shouldn't we be? I bumped into a gentleman's car. His name was Jules Henry Becker. At least that's what it said on his driving license. Issued in Cairo. I telephoned our embassy in Cairo to check. No one there has a license in that name. So I came along here to find out what it's all about. But he's not here. No, he's not. What are you doing here? I Ivan. He's an old friend of mine. Ivan or Jules? I only know Ivan. Bill doesn't know Ivan. John. Promise me you won't mention this to Bill. Don't tell me you've uh, been unfaithful to him. I suppose you could call it that. Do you like a drink? No, thank you. So you've got a guilty secret. That's nothing to be ashamed of. You're only doing your job. We're both doing our job. John, I don't understand you. You're, you're frightening me. Let me tell you the story of your life. You were born, shall we say, um, somewhere north of here. Do you know exactly where I was born? You showed great promise at school, particularly in languages. One day, a stranger came to interview you, and you said goodbye to your parents and went to Moscow. You took an intensive course in the English language. You didn't know why then. And presently, another stranger came to see you, and you were sent on a long journey into the steppes. You came across a small town. And this was the biggest surprise of your life. It was a complete replica of an English town. You had started your training as a secret agent. You stayed there for five years until you spoke, thought, dreamed in your new language, and then you were given a British passport. And you went home, 
home to a place that you had never seen. You stayed long enough somewhere to get a genuine background, and then you went to London. One day, they pointed Bill out to you, and they said, he's an important British agent. Marry him. That's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. But true. You sure you wouldn't like a drink? Um, gin, uh, whiskey, rum, sort of vodka. Oh, shall we, uh, shall we send out an SOS? Where would you like to call? Moscow? What, um, what frequency do you receive on? What time are your watches? Your bag, please. You, uh, seen one of these before? Yes, I thought so. Hmm. Very neat. It had to be, you see. Your bag was with your wrap beside us on the terrace when Bill and I were talking. Well, Leslie, uh, now I have uh, another reason for liking you. We're in the same business. On opposite sides. On different teams. What are you going to do? It's not for him to choose. Hello, Ivan. Uh, I was expecting you. Don't. Ah. Come now, surely you don't objectify uh, smoke. Yeah? Please keep your hands out of your pockets, Mr. Lawrence. Now, you're, you're not to worry. I never carry a gun. They're noisy, and they hurt people. Besides, I manage very well without. Got a light, Leslie. Keep away from him. Oh, now, Leslie knows I won't hurt her. Don't you, Leslie? Thank you. Here. Go down and open the door of the cellar. I'm ordering you. Now, come, Leslie. You know the first duty of a good agent, unquestioning obedience. Isn't that so, Eva? No, but stop, Eva. Mr. Sushli. It's in the name of the name. I'm going to ask you to ask you to ask you He should be as lively as a cricket in three or four hours. I'm, uh... Sorry to do this to your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Yes, I know that. After you married Bill, you fell in love with him, didn't you? Yes. Did you report that to Moscow? <laughs> no. That was very unprofessional of you. I couldn't. Dad had taken me away from difficult to, uh, two opposing loyalties and trying to be honest to both of them. What will you do now? I'll go home. To Bill? No, no, my real home. My life here is finished. Will you say goodbye to him? She has gone. If she hadn't, look, she was doing what she was forced to do. She didn't have to fool me all she the time. She was doing her best. Her loyalties were divided. And I came up for a second. I don't think so. By the way, I forgot to thank you for clearing me. I feel just fine about that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's... I'd better be on my way.
Go ahead as planned. your people are getting anxious. Not anymore. I've just called them. So you're convinced at last? I always was. Just wasn't in Bill's character. And what do you mean by that? It was his wife. Planted on him years before they were married. You sure of that? Yes. Why? Then why is he bolted? North, for the frontier. I uh, must be after Leslie. This is most embarrassing. You, you haven't given your men any special instructions, have you? He was running. Stop them. I can't. I have no means of contacting them. suffer any pain. Gas brings on a feeling of well-being. Absolute complacency and then unconsciousness. You won't feel a thing. so they just moved off.
gas poisonous. Good heavens, no. It's quite harmless, old man. Take the wheel. What's that, old man? Take it! I'm going to make a jump. Drive as close as you can. You're crazy! Do as I tell you! 